Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, thank you for spending some time with us. Worldly and Past Life Visions, Atlantis, Lemuria, Ancient Technology, Spiritual Sciences. It's the critically acclaimed Legacy Episode Series by Robert Maxim. Five episodes called a must-read for every truth seeker. The author's real visions of previous lifetimes in Atlantis, Lemuria, and other worlds where these lives took place. The series, 30 years in the making, features advanced scientific and spiritual concepts with evidence. For Robert, these experiences began as a child with sleep time visits to other worlds. They continue in both wake and sleep states. He spent 40 years studying science, religion, and the science of life. Author of the Legacy series, Robert Maxim, scientist, theologian, musician, joining us once again on This Week in America. Robert, welcome back to the program. Always a pleasure. We're loaded with questions. I hope you're loaded with answers. A lot of ground to cover tonight. Thank you once again for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. We always learn something, and it's always great to have uh, Robert back with us on the program for, I believe, if I'm counting correctly, the 45th time on the program, no, 44th time on the program today. And it's uh, always great to have you here. And we take uh, listener, viewer questions. What we would like you to do is go to either one of our websites, thisweekinamerica.us, viewer comments. Uh, Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. There where you can contact the author, give us your questions, and we will address them as soon as we can on the program. First one tonight, explain astral flight, and is it the same as astral travel? Ooh, good question. Uh, there is a difference. Uh, astral oh. travel, uh, you could say that it is the same thing as astral flight, but uh, what we have to consider is that astral flight is a temporary attunement of consciousness to another or higher part of yourself and of the universe where the mind can be somewhere else without the body being present. What that means is we have other states of mind, other states of consciousness, which we're not aware of, but when we die we join that state of mind. That's that state of mind of tranquility, of peace, of all-knowing. Uh, that's just one of them. There are thousands, millions of those conscious levels above us. When we enter into those stages of consciousness, that is the level of consciousness that allows us to have astral travel or astral flight. Uh, but we have to make sure that we understand uh, a critical difference here. Whenever anybody mentions astral flight or astral travel, they think, I'm going to close my eyes, I'm going to imagine, I'm going to this place, and voila, I am yes, there. Yes. Well, it doesn't really work that way. Um, me personally, I don't give myself into astral travel i don't ask for it if it happens it's because it was meant to be but i don't push it and the reason is that many times when we consciously try we're really not going anywhere except a fantasy i'm not saying that all of them are but it for anyone who is unprepared, you never know what's going to happen. Interesting, because sometimes I hear those expressions and I think they're like interchangeable. They sort of throw them back and forth and uh, you wonder. Mm -hmm. So that was a good question to start this off, the, uh, uh, yeah. the difference. And I think what you're saying is quite a subtle difference between the two. Very subtle. Flight is usually taken to mean that, okay, I closed my eyes and I went. Astral travel is more of, you know, this experience happened. I don't know how it happened. Uh, they are kind of interchangeable, but for the most part, that's kind of the dividing line between them. Okay, now we've got another question here. This is basically two questions. Is it possible we are hosting an alien? And then they also ask, is it possible to be possessed? Very good question. Uh, the answer is yes. These are called 
for the most part, negative astrals or obsessions. And they tune into our soul in a way very similar to astral travel. And they share their thoughts and desires and feelings with us so that we end up doing what they want us to do. Since they don't have a body, they want to experience the physical world through us and also incline us to like what they like. Uh, many of our thoughts, desires, and beliefs are not really, not really ours. So we have to be aware that when we feel, for example, anger, fear, or if we want something, it could be coming from us, yes, but perhaps it is being urged on by, shall we say, our mutual friends. Oh, okay. Now, the other side of that is there's also, shall we say, a positive alien that we host. And that can be called our superconscious. Uh, some people call it the guardian angels. They call them the Holy Spirit, all sorts of things. But it's coming from above. It's not coming from below. So that is a good influence to have. Those are the good guys, shall we say. Um, yes. So if, they, if those good guys incline us to do something above what our negative thoughts would have us do, well, by all means, Let's listen more to that channel instead of the other one. So again, uh, this goes back to having to know ourselves, know our thoughts, know who's influencing us, know what the source is. We always have to check out the references. We have to check out the car facts. Uh, we can't just do things because we feel it or because we heard a voice that said, you know, you ought to do this. We have to check out the source. Many negative astrals try to dress up like sheep, and they're wolves. Now, we have to be careful. How do we how do we do that? Well, if you don't know yourself, you don't know what your own negative tendencies are. How can you tell that another source is negative? Oh, okay, yes. You think you think it's normal. You think it's great. You think what they're offering and teaching you is good, but it really isn't. Once you start realizing, you know, this is, uh, I was really thinking egotistically, I wanted this for myself, that should be the first clue. If you want to be a channel because you want fame, or even if you want to help other people, but because you're doing it, ouch, that's where the hitch is. And that's what we have to be very careful of. Good answer to uh, an interesting question. And again, we're taking listener questions. If you would like to get in contact with us, very simple, our website, thisweekinamerica.us. There's a, a, an area there for viewer comments. Robert's website, and it's Robert Maxim, M-A-X-X-I-M. The book is the Legacy Series. Book's available, of course, at Amazon. You'll find all the information, book information as well, at his very informative website, rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com. All that information, you can link in, uh, link in directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. This is interesting, and, and sometimes I've wondered this myself. Alien has a negative connotation. Are they offended when we call them that? And I've tried to change my vernacular a little bit where I'm referring to them as brothers rather than aliens because I don't want to make anybody mad. <laughs> is alien <laughs> negative? Is that something they look at as, as a negative? Well, if we take a quick step back and we realize that they are not offended by the things that we mentally ask of them, like taking them to their worlds, giving, giving us a ride on their ships or sharing technology or, or fixing all of our problems, you know, calling them aliens instead of brothers is certainly an insignificant insult by comparison. Yes, uh, yes. I, I, I have been told by them to call them brothers. They don't even give, give me names. Uh, sometimes I know who they are, but out of respect, I just don't even think of it. They are a brother, they are a sister. Uh, but yeah, there's so many insults. 
uh, that we send our way just by our very action even if we're not even if we don't have them in mind just the way we act towards one another uh, it's not really an insult but they were just baffled how can any uh, sapient being act the way we do get angry the way we do have fears be selfish hate um, argue uh, compare uh, convert I mean they look at us and they go how is this possible <laughs> well, yes so we should hide the newspaper from the brothers uh, definitely okay that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fascinating perspective there and uh, as always Robert Maxim our guest on the program another call uh, a question coming in from a viewer is our longevity in this life related to our lifestyle yes a big yes Ooh, okay big yes now what's involved there is I'll start number one our thoughts yes our thoughts make mm. us age. Mm. Let's go on to the next uh, evil group, foods. How about chemicals, medicines, uh, solar radiation? All of this combined. Uh, there is a defect in chromosomes number one and number 20. And this information is on my website. Uh, these def defects affect the production of it's a long name. It's called glutathione S transferase mu1. It's also known as GSTM1 for short. That's our body's master antioxidant, and its scarce amount causes aging, cancer, diabetes, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, osteoporosis, high blood pressure. 99% of all of our diseases, including aging, is due to a lack of that. Uh, there's also something that a lack of GSTM causes. If we look at the uh, chromosomes in our in our DNA, it looks like a little ribbon thingy here with another ribbon thingy. Oh, yes, yes. It looks like a, like a H, something like that, the, I yes. guess. The tips of the chromosomes have, shall we say, it's sort of like a rubber tire in a sense. Uh, it's called a telomere. Now the telomere is is uh, is part of DNA, yes, but it's there to protect the codons that follow, the genes that follow. So it's this little bit of uh, tire here with time, abuse, and everything else that I mentioned, thoughts, medicines, uh, food, chemicals, solar, everything. What happens is the telomere begins to recede. It gets worn, 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 worn. Now, as it shortens, what happens is that the rest of the chromosomes are being replicated by replicant genes and other mechanisms in the, in, inside of the cell, inside of the nucleus. So imagine that you're trying to replicate this entire gene but now, because the telomere is shorter, what happens is your replication now shifts. Mm, okay. You get corrupted DNA. And that causes aging. So how do you protect those telomeres from being washed away? How do you rebuild those telomeres so that your re replication is correct? Guess what? You need GSTM one active oh, okay. uh, if you go to my website it's a long explanation but you need to take three basic amino acids cysteine glycine and glutamine those three amino acids uh, they help produce glutathione in your cells so if your DNA is misfiring it's not producing enough GSTM1 cysteine glycine Glutamine, those three, they will create glutathione in your cells and help protect telomeres, help protect your DNA, and help to get rid of free radicals inside of your cells, which causes all kinds of, 
of problems. But don't forget, also, your thoughts are involved in this. Whenever you get mad, whenever you get nervous, you are sending a wave of stress down your DNA system. And your replications are going to get whacked. So you have to watch after your emotions. And brothers have said that the number one cause of every bit of suffering, both physical and mental, that we have comes from right here. Yep, from the brain. From the brain. That is correct. He was pointing to I his head for those of us that, uh, you know, those who are not watching. By the way, <laughs> this will be available on YouTube. And if you go to well, YouTube and probably put in This Week in America, you'll find this. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, in the video tab, you'll be able to watch uh, all of Robert's programs, the videos that, uh, that we have done. So basically, what a little bit of laughter as well along the way, sort of like chills you out a little bit and uh, keeps you calm and maybe uh, helps keep you uh, at least uh, looking a little bit younger than you would otherwise. <laughs> it's all about health, and health starts with yes. the mind, and also you are what you yep. eat, but also you are what they ate. So you can get the same amount of protein and minerals from vegetables, you have to consume and spend more money on meats to get the same amount. And of course, the meat contaminates that protein and that mineral. So just don't eat meat. Just go vegetarian. Well, yeah. Don't have so to if be somebody vegan. says, I've got to uh, have uh, meat because I need the protein, there are other ways. In fact, I think what you just said was there are actually other ways and better ways to get protein rather than from meat. You know, uh, in the morning, uh, I take my hand and I fill it up with sunflower seeds. And that's breakfast. That's, that's breakfast. That's the equivalent of a steak. Interesting, because I've heard that sunflower seeds are very good for you. So they actually they are. They're a, a main part of your diet. That's right. Okay, well, I guess I should put my cocoa puffs aside and get some uh, sunflower <laughs> seeds to uh, to better start the day. I've never tasted a cocoa puff. I do need to say that. That was a, strictly a joke. That was not something that, uh, that I eat for breakfast, okay? Uh, another question, is there such a thing sure. as divine guidance? And if so, how do we tap into it? Oh, there is. Divine guidance starts with you and me. We were divine instructed before coming to life. We were given a mission. We were given instructions. We were given guidance. We were told what we were going to have to deal with down here. Now, we're born, the world surrounds us, and we forget that guidance. But wait, there is a plan B. There is, shall we say, assisted guidance that will come our way from our higher self, from higher beings. Uh, call them angels, messengers, that's what the word means, or uh, from, you know, celestial entities. Um, the help is always there. So how do we tap into it? Number one, remember that you were given instructions before coming here. You have those instructions. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You do. The second thing, if you start asking for help without inquiring in you first, you're not gonna you're not gonna get anything. You're not going to go divine because it's your fear that's calling for help. You should have absolutely no fear. You have all the answers you need. You have all the tools that you need. And the divine guidance will speak to what you learned before coming here. If you start asking, help, 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 you're blocking the help. Just trust that you have it and trust what you were given before coming. And all of the help you need will be there. Robert has mentioned his website several times, as I have, and there's more there than uh, really meets the eye. I mean, there's a lot of great information there, all the topics that we we talk about it on the program and so many more at his website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. So you can go to the website and get uh, get the information there. Information there as well on legacy. That's how this whole uh, relationship with Robert started. Robert uh, had written the series. We had him on to talk about uh, legacies, continuing to work on the series. You'll get the information there, of course, available at Amazon and be able to, uh, to get information and order as well. 
Back to taking your questions. We've talked about this before, the, the importance of a spiritual awakening. And a caller is saying, actually, how can we begin spiritual awakening? Well, pretty much what I just described. Yeah. By, ta by tapping into that divine guidance, as, as I explained. But don't forget, if you don't know what divine guidance is or where it comes from, how can you hear it? How can you understand it? Uh, let's say that I that I give you that I tell you go ahead and come to Arizona where I live. So you jump in the car, you drive down uh, I forty, uh, you get down to Arizona, you you cross the border, you're now in Arizona. Okay, Roberto, I'm here. Where? <laughs> where where yes. am I? Yes. You're, you know, divine guidance. You, you know it's divine. You know it's guidance. But what does it feel like? Where is it? Where is it coming from? It's in you. You have all the guidance and all the divinity that you need. You come equipped with it. You know, you will know how to awaken when you realize that you don't need to awaken. You just need to adhere to that guidance that you have inside of you. That is your awakening. Awakening is nothing more than shutting down the old door, the ego door. And anytime it pops up, close it. Instead, open up the real door, the door of love, kindness, selflessness uh, and as I say give everything for others give everything give your time give sacrifice everything that you have if you're busy if you're tired if you're if you have a migraine and somebody needs help it don't matter go help that's what it takes that is real awakening uh, real awakening is serving the elements serving all of creation not doing their homework for them but motivating those who are afraid those who don't have uh, shall we say the trust the confidence to express themselves in a positive and loving manner the more that we start acting that role the more we realize we were awake all along. All we had to do was just act the part. It's that simple. Interesting. It, it isn't complicated, is it? <laughs> no. It's right we we're there. all born with it. Yeah, we're all born with it. We just exercise uh, a choice to ignore it and just go with what we think is for certain but that for certain we built over over the years before that when we were children the for certain was a whole different being it was love and it was it was this age of inquiry for us and that's why Jesus said to come to me you must be as a child and that's what he meant Boy, fascinating information here. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, author of the Legacy Series, a recurring guest on our program, taking your questions. One of those, I've heard about light and dark energy. Can you explain? Well, light is infinity. It's a progressive, positive, evolutionary direction or force that increases the amount of God, shall we say, in you kind of what we were just discussing. Yes. Grow that guidance, that divine guidance that you that you were born with. Now, darkness is going in the other direction. Both are energy. But light is in front of you, while darkness is behind you, in a way of speaking. So, darkness is what we trust here. Darkness is, I have to pay that person back. I don't like the, the way that person talked to me. That was insulting. I'm afraid of doing this. 
I'm going to lose money if I do this. I have to cheat my taxes. Uh, I mean, all sorts of things. These are all negative directions. Jesus said uh, to give God what's God's and give Caesar what's Caesar's. That means that if we are in this world, and he said this very clearly, I forget the, 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 uh, the verse right now, but he said, if you hate this life, you will forever live it. So if you hate how your life is going, watch out. You might end up having to come back and go into it again. Wow. There's nothing. There is nothing to hate, and he said it very clearly. There's nothing here to hate. It, love your life, because it's it's a challenge for you. Once you overcome your own negations, you will look back and say, "Well, that was easy." You're about to climb a bigger mountain. When you climb that, you will look back and say, "That was easy." So. Don't let the world sink you down. Don't let the world worry you. Uh, don't worry about darkness. Just practice spiritual elegance. Be positive. Be kind. Be giving. And then, as Jesus said, everything will be added on to you. Because that's how the flow turns on. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, author of the Legacy series, Legacy Available, at Amazon, you'll find information available at Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. And your chance to ask a question, very simple, go to Robert's website or our website. And uh, for uh, comments there, you can submit your question. We'll be happy to talk about it on a future program. This is interesting. It's pretty basic. Why are we here on Earth and what is expected of us? Earth is a school, but we're here because we could not get along with others on other worlds. Uh, we were troublemakers, <clears throat> and we're confined here to work out our differences. The expectation, like I mentioned, is pretty simple. Give your all to, for others. Want nothing for yourself. And serve the elements. That is brotherhood, and that's what you need to live on other worlds. Now, I had three astral, flight, three astral flights, um, astral travels, about <laughs> three, four weeks ago. And first, it was a Saturnian experience. Uh, and there, I was prepared to basically analyze myself and be dead sincere with myself of everything that I feel. Be dead sincere with myself. Then, I had an astral flight to... Uh, inside of a Nushin mothership. Now there, I was, I was shown three symbols. I was shown an elephant, a, a fountain, and a, uh, a tree, a special-looking tree with planets going around it. So I immediately turned to the brothers and I said, I know what this means. Elephant never forgets a thing. Great memory. The elephant represents my past, my old self, my negative self. <clears throat> the tree with the planets going around it, that's the solar system. That It represents the brotherhood, the tree of life. That's where I want to live, with the tree of life, with the brotherhood. But to go from elephant to tree of life, I have to drink from that fountain first. I have to drink that liquid. I have to put it to practice. I have to make it part of me. And once I do, then I can be a brother. Then I can live in that brotherhood. The water in that fountain is, of course, the teachings of the universal law, the teachings of divinity, which Jesus brought to all of us. But we have miscarriaged that. So, the third vision was on a Martian spacecraft. And what they talked about was DNA, hygiene, mental mental health, 
basically what I talked about a little while ago yes. on aging. So preparation was the first astral flight. The second is how to become a brother. The third is how to maintain it. Because if you become a brother, do you think do you think on Mars they have pepperoni pizza? I hope so. Think again. <laughs> okay. Uh, the brothers are mostly vegetarians, and they eat for what they need. They don't need. They don't eat because of flavor or because of quantity. They eat what their body needs, and they are mentally aware of what their bodies need. They can tell. That's the level of wisdom that they have. Interesting. So, so are we prepared to be brothers by any, by any means? No. We're far from it. We have a lot to learn, and this is why we have to be here. We have to learn these things. We have to realize the extent of what is required, what is in the contract to live in another world. Robert Maxim, our guest on This Week in America. If you've got a question for Robert, please let us know. You can get a hold of uh, me at uh, thisweekinamerica.us, Robert at rgaten.com. This one probably ties into with what we talked about in the last questions. How do we fulfill our soul's purpose here on Earth? Ah, well, yes. As, as we were mentioning throughout yeah, the of, program, actually. Yes, yeah, sort of a continuation. Yeah. We come, see, we come with a mission. And that mission is to tame and edu educate our lower nature. After being trained in spiritual worlds, in between lives, like, like I mentioned, to fulfill it, we must face and correct what our lower self wants us to do. The lower self is a bully. You, your consciousness is like a social worker uh, that's trying to get this bully to behave in school. How often do we, as social workers, succeed with this bully? I'd say the odds are against us. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how often do we have the upper hand? Not that much. How often do we truly love humility and the well-being of others before our own? Do we know the science of living and reincarnation? These answers, of course, you'll find a legacy, but just gives you an idea of what we need to fulfill this life. We, we need to know that we're on a mission, that we're a teacher. And anything that is negative in us, we need to not only recognize, but we need to stop doing it. And the more we do that, the more things we're going to find wrong with us. At first, we'll think, oh, there's nothing wrong with us. Oh, maybe this is bad. Work with that with a while, for a while, something else will come up. And then something else, and something else, and something else, and something else. Before you know it, you'll go, boy, I was in bad shape. But that's how it rolls. And that is exactly how we fulfill our purpose here. Life here is not a vacation. It's a learning experience, obviously. And you said something that's, that's interesting. Further explanations in, in legacy. What we're talking about, I, I don't want to say necessarily, are concepts. But maybe for some people it's difficult to, to fully grasp. If you go to legacy, those are what real life experiences. I mean, this is... This is basically your story through a number of lifetimes. You know, I could have written Legacy the way that I'm speaking now to the audience, but I realized you have to live. You have to put your, your, yourself in the shoes of others. Yes. Experience the word, experience the, the context, how the words flow. What are the individuals trying to say? What is the narrative explaining about the situation? What is the response from the brotherhood? to a problem what did they suggest uh what did they what did they see in me how did they present problems to me little by little what was the sequence how did they explain it and then how do i change it had to be in parable form it had to be in story form yes. so people could live it and then practice it and feel it for themselves once you feel the way that these brothers are You'll just be in complete awe. It's like I never, never thought I would read about or, or meet someone so wise, understanding, loving, 
forgiving. It's like, it's a wonder to, 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 to be by people like this, that never hate, never friction, never fear, never judgment. It's just absolute love. It's just awesome to feel them and be around them. And it's, wish a, it's a great story as well. Robert is a very talented author, and what we're talking about, he brings brings to life through experiences. And I highly recommend going to uh, his website or going to Amazon and checking out the, the Legacy series. Uh, next question, is there a difference between our soul and spirit? Again, I hear people sometimes use them interchangeably. Is that accurate? None, actually. But the soul is divided into three parts, actually. Mm. It's, there's the, the lower self, that's the, the old memories. You have the higher self, that's the divine guidance. And you have consciousness. Consciousness is the social worker I was talking about. The lower self is the bully. And the higher self is what Jesus referred to many times as the Father which is within, or the divine guidance. So, in between the lower self and the higher self, of course, as I described before, there are many layers of, shall we say, understanding or consciousness or feelings that we have developed through our lifetimes. When we die, we join those, those uh, consciousness, and that's why we feel this uh, as a different being, a more wise being, a more fulfilled being, and those consciousness are alive at all times. Uh, we just happen to be the instrument that is checking out this consciousness level here on Earth right now. But when you do an astral flight, you're connecting to a different one, a higher one. And that higher one has the ability to connect you with, with another location or another mind. You go up even higher, let's say in, in death, now you're in a consciousness that can, that can survive in a divine celestial environment. So one soul, many levels of consciousness, they are all you. They're all alive at the same time, but you're only aware of one right now. Hope that helps. I think it does. Clear to me, so I'm assuming that will answer the question for the, uh, the listener as well. This ties into the alien brothers that we talked about before a lot along those lines on the, on the program. We talked mm -hmm. about it the last time, and I, I remember specifically when you said, Aliens are living here now. And his question is, I heard you say aliens live here now. Were they born here or sent? How do you know who they are? And do you have contact with them? All the above. I've had contact with four and know by the mental feel when I meet them that they are. Um, I have contact with several others. Uh, I can think back on these beings and I can feel their mental response. Um, were they born here? No, they were sent here. Uh, the idea of being born is, well, there have been cases where yes, they have been, they have been born here. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Every, everyone is familiar with Mahatma Gandhi, uh -huh. Buddha, uh, how about uh, Nikola Tesla? Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, many of them have done the sacrifice. They have come here to help us along from a faith and science perspective, to raise our awareness. Um, but for the most part, the guidance is provided mentally and remotely. That's interesting when you were talking about if we're here, basically we're here because of something we did, not properly, not well, in, a, in another life. And I'm thinking some of these people, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, and it's like, wow, I wonder what they did. So they're here, and you're saying basically they are here on their own volition to, to help us out. That's correct. Interesting. And of course, being here, they are putting their evolution at risk because coming here we're all um, we're all prisoners okay it's like okay let's say that you have uh, a prison and 
you want to go into the prison as a make-believe inmate just to see what's going on and help them out. Yes. So you're you're not charged with anything. You just you just become an inmate to be with the other inmates and help them along. Uh, you have to act tough. You know you have to protect yourself. Uh, you might get in fights. All this can happen. You're going to get bad food. Uh, but this is what these brothers are signing up for. Anytime they come down here to help, they are becoming inmates in this prison. Good way to phrase it. That uh, Graphically, I, I know exactly what you're talking about now by putting it on terms that, uh, that we can understand. Robert yeah. Maxim, our guest on the program, taking your questions. His website is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com author of the Legacy Series. Really interesting question here. I was thinking of signing up for 23andMe to find out oh. where I came from and who I really am. Will they really tell me or should I do a regression for the real truth? Well, where the body comes from is not where your mind is from. It's like, say you're born in LA, but you bought a car made in Detroit with parts from China. Uh, your spiritual heritage is different than the body. Now, uh, I know we all want to find out uh, what our genealogy is. Um, I know my son actually did uh, uh, 23andMe, and he brought me the results. And uh, uh, we have I actually have uh, part Iberian, part African, uh, some um, um, English and Chinese. So now, did I come from all those different countries? No, that's just where this car, this vehicle was made, but where the mind was made. It's been under construction, not only in different countries, different places of Earth, but other worlds as well, where I've had other bodies. And I have also had experiences in between lives in other dimensions and other celestial worlds. So where has my true being been created? All over the universe, all over the celestial kingdoms. Now, regression. Let's talk about that real quick. I would never do it simply because you never know who you are going to be dealing with or what astral force is going to possess and cheat your mind. Only your higher self, when you're ready, should tell you, don't go searching for your past. Let it come to you on its own time. There are people who also try to consume drinks or drugs to supposedly see stuff, see the past, see other dimensions. There's a very strong one in Peru called ayahuasca, for example. These are all hallucinogen, it's hallucinogens. Right. Uh, I would, I would not do that. Any time you put yourself in the hands of a chemical, or someone else is going to regress you, you're you're telling your higher self, "See ya. Don't want to see ya. Don't want to be with you." So can the higher self come in and help you at, at, at the point where you're doing these things? You just told it to go goodbye. Now you're on your own now. Hmm. So don't do that. <laughs> uh, the past will come to you. But first, do what I mentioned before. Do your mission. Analyze yourself. Find out what is surrounding you and what's in you that's negative and the more you dig the more you're going to find and as you find all of a sudden something's going to come to your mind oh i i lived in egypt and i did, did this out of the blue then it will have credibility because you were not conscious of that when you least uh, expect yes. it and yes. it comes that's good confirmation Robert Gaten with us on the the website R Gaten uh, R G A E T A N dot com. Robert Maxim, author of Legacy. We got time for a couple more questions. I have no idea where the time has gone. 
My stopwatch is working on a different dimension, I think. It's on uh, astral mm -hmm. speed here. Uh, how long, we've touched on a lot of these tonight. Further question, how long has your soul been around? Uh, not quite sure, but several million years, possibly even longer. Uh, that is true of everyone else. Uh, we've had all very humble beginnings as intelligent beings. We have become what we are now, and uh, we're all trying to pace ourselves to become something greater than what we are. But you know, the soul, our souls have been around for the longest time, indeed. Interesting when you put this in, in the perspective of millions of years. It uh, millions. It's sort of shocking to to hear it that way. I think we'll wrap up with this one. In this again, areas that we've touched on meaning a lot of people have a lot of questions in these areas and I judging from the questions I think it's a good thing because with the answers they're able to improve their lives and what they're doing their their mission in their lives and the question is do you have a specific mission when we reincarnate ah uh, that's the question of questions yes this is this is the question we all need to ask and here is the answer that we should all consider it's very simple the mission is teach, domesticate, tame your lower nature with instructions that were given to you before coming to life by your higher self and many celestial beings that are continuing to work with you in this life remotely. Face your past mistakes face traumas that you experienced in past lives and clean all that up. Don't feel like you're incompetent because, uh, well, uh, they burnt me in the stake and so now I have this problem. But that doesn't matter. You can overcome that. If you're aware that you were burnt in the stake, just leave it behind, move on, and learn the universal laws. Don't ever blame anyone for anything that was done to you. It was a learning lesson, and it was your life to live that experience so you would learn from it. Everybody is learning at different lesson at different times. Different things happen to them, but this is so they grow and they understand. Don't blame anyone. Don't even blame yourself. Just take it as a lesson and realize the infinite does not condemn anyone. The infinite does not does not judge anyone. You condemn yourself because you want to. You judge yourself because you want to. This is completely in reversal of what many faiths are teaching, that you're going to be judged because you were bad, or you're going to be condemned. You're going to be, this is going to happen to you. No. The infinite, again, the infinite does not condemn. The infinite does not judge. And if you don't believe that, reread every word that Jesus mentioned, especially Mary Magdalene. What happened with Mary Magdalene? Learn from that. What happened? Many other individuals that faced him. What did he do? What Did he condemn them? No. Never did. So never think for a minute that you are condemned, that you're judged, and that you're incompetent. Never. When we do the right thing and we apply the true universal laws, we can move on to other higher realms, as I explained. We can't take our lower nature there. It's not allowed, as you saw. They're not going to have pepperoni pizza, so you better forget about that flavor. <laughs> so <laughs> these, are, these are very important things. Please consider it. Reread everything that Jesus mentioned. Don't read outside of that. Just read that. And you will find out what our true specific mission is when we reincarnate. It's humility, spiritual elegance, love, patience. That's all we need to do the mission. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. Uh, 
great discussion, fast moving today. We got through a lot of questions and we encourage your question. Very simple, go to thisweekinamerica.us for your comments. Let us know a question for Robert or go to Robert's website, which is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N. They're uh, an area for comments and put a question in to talk about on the, uh, on the television and radio program. Robert, as always a pleasure. Time has gone by quickly. We, uh, uh, we got through a lot of ground here today. We invite your questions. We'll tackle, tackle those the next time. Thank you for being with us once again on the program. And thank you for your audience to participate. I appreciate their questions. And they are very good ones, so please keep them coming in. Uh, great information at Robert's website. Besides putting in your question, you can find out where he's going to be, possibly near you, and uh, we're conducting some of the seminars and information on, on everything he says on the program. It's all backed by evidence, and it's on his website. That, again, is rgaetan.com. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Robert's website. We thank you so much for listening to the program. Thank you for your questions. You're listening to This Week in America, and you'll find us online at thisweekinamerica.us.